I remember being 18 and my mom asks me this question. What are you going to be doing in four years? And I named some things that I thought I would be doing. She listened to me carefully and gave me a long explanation and said this. She said, you're not going to be doing any of that. I was surprised. She said, you know, you have no idea what you will be doing, but you will be doing something really cool. But it's not something that you can't imagine right now. It's one of the greatest things that anyone gave me. She was totally right. I can never imagine where I ended up today from where I started. So today I would like to tell you all a story of uh, something that I was really lucky to be a part of and how it has changed my outlook as to how to find my passion. When I think back of my undergrad days, en engineering days, my memories probably fall outside the norm. For me, engineering was not about the high grades I scored, the friendships I made, or the transition from childhood to adulthood. Instead, it was all about the life lessons I learned within those walls. When I was in my high school, one of my professors said me, uh, said me, you never know your capabilities until you try. And these words have been ingrained in my mind for the past four years. It was back in March 2012, I visited Chennai to discuss with my professor about my summer research project. After a quick discussion, I had one complete day before I could get back. I started thinking, what, how do I spend the complete day? And just then, uh, a thought came to my mind. Uh, I remember my grandfather once told me that Chennai is really famous for leather. So I decided why not go, go and buy some leather boots for my grandfather as well as my parents. So I entered the leather shop, and as soon as I entered the leather shop, there were just two people, and they were quarreling amongst themselves. None of them were able to understand what the other person was trying to tell. They were really facing a lot of problem in conveying their message. And then, one of them immediately left the shop. I could see he was really frustrated. And out of curiosity, I went to the other person and I asked him what the matter was. And the reply I got from him really shook me because the person who had left the shop was deaf and vocally disabled. I was heartbroken, and this incident kept on revolving my mind for weeks. <coughs> communication is as essential as oxygen in our lives. Without communication, the growth of an individual is really hampered. It is generally said that the taste of water changes after every mile, and language changes after every half, one and a half mile. And in a country like India, where there are so many languages spoken, we as normal people find it so difficult sometimes to communicate. Imagine how these people who don't have either of the sense organs must be feeling. The deaf and the mute live their entire life not being able to feel normal. Here are some statistics which I really want to share with you. According to the World Federation of Deaf, 66% of the hearing impaired people live in developing countries which, who have very limited access, to edu limited access to education and employment. It's really shocking to know that 10% of the world's hearing impaired population receive education, just 10%. And out of that, just 1% receive education in sign language. In spite of the fact that every, every hearing impaired people use sign language in their daily lives. And reflecting this educational disadvantage, unemployment rates are extremely high in the hearing impaired community. I was really shocked when one of my friends told me that some nation even denied basic civil rights to the hearing impaired community. Are they not one amongst us? Are they not part of a society? So I immediately went back to my college and gathered a few like-minded people to discuss and, and discuss and share this incident with them. Because I always like working in team because it boosts my confidence and there is so much of learning and sharing which, which is happening when people from various backgrounds and expertise come together to solve a particular problem. And everyone was really moved by the incident and the facts that I shared with them. We started imagining, why can't we build something which will let these people speak? Then one of my friends interrupted and he told me, dude, what are you speaking? We know nothing. How are we going to do it? I was speechless because I myself had no experience because I had not worked on any electronics or algorithms before. 
So I decided to approach a professor. I went to a professor of my university and shared this incident and the idea. So he listened to me patiently and he looked up to me and said, Kuldeep, I think you are the best student of this batch, batch and you have all the capability of getting a gold medal. Why do you want to jump into all this? I want you to stick to your studies and concentrate and get and top the university. And such things will keep coming later in your life. I was in dilemma. I didn't know what to do. I went back home and started thinking, will this really affect my studies? Should I give it a try? And then I remembered what my high school professor said. So I decided to give it a try and stick to my goals and ideas. Because when you give birth to an idea, risks become your best friend and you have to accept it. So, I went, so the next day I went back to my friends and convinced them to be a part of the team because I really needed them because uh, a team makes really a big difference. And fortunately, everyone agreed and now we were all set to transform our ideas into reality. So initially, we visited a couple of NGOs who work for hearing impaired people to exactly get a broad view of what are the problems they are facing. And there, I just happened to enter a classroom which was really noisy and there were small kids who were exchanging and talking amongst themselves by exchanging signs. And there, I found this poster. And the poster had various signs and their corresponding alphabets displayed. And just then, an idea struck my mind. I started thinking, why can't we build something which will convert these signs into alphabets and once you have alphabets displayed, you can form words, sentences, paragraphs and then convert it into voice using text-to-speech converter. I immediately shared the idea with my friends and now we had our goals narrowed down. But we still had two major challenges. The first one was again, how are we going to proceed? Because we knew nothing. And the second one is, how do we make the glove low cost? Because it's, I personally feel it's not a solution if it's not low cost. And if it's not cost effective, I'm sure it won't reach the needy. We were really fortunate and lucky enough to get complete sponsorship from IEEE Epic's community to build a prototype and then see to it that it reaches the needy. So after a lot of brainstorming and literature survey, we came up with a final design. So we decided to design a hand glove for the, for the people which has five accelerometers embedded on it and this converts the mechanism of their signs, converts it into text and finally displays it on the screen. We work day and night from understanding how a simple accelerometer works to designing a complete system full of electronics and running algorithms. We were, it was really fun. We were so curious to know how every component works. And as soon as the courier guy delivered us these accelerometers, we were so desperate to try if our algorithm works fine that we immediately mounted the accelerometers on one of my friend's bare hand to try if our algorithm works. And here's a snapshot of my friend Somshaker uh, posing in front of the camera with accelerometers on his bare hand. And fortunately, the algorithm worked. Actually, my friend Somshaker played two roles in the team. He was an electronics designer as well as he was he played the role of a guinea pig because we always tested the glove on him. We were really in, in love with our work. We were enjoying what we were doing. And the only way to do great work is to enjoy what you do. And finally, within a month, we had a first prototype ready. We had a glove which could efficiently recognize and distinguish between signs and efficiently convert it into text and display it on the screen. So I, I would like to show you a small clip of uh, the results of my first prototype. So here we call the glove as talkable. This is the sign for A. It's displayed A. This is the sign for B. The B gets displayed. This is the sign for C. And the corresponding letter is displayed. And then you have the sign for D. This is exactly uh, how we, we achieve efficiency for all the alphabets and numbers. Now it was time to go back to the NGOs and try if everything works fine. So we visited nearly eight hearing impaired NGOs in Mumbai as well as Bangalore to try if our algorithm and prototype works fine. 
And fortunately, we received overwhelming response. People were really excited. And teachers also started giving feedbacks that they wanted to use this glove as a teaching aid to teach sign language to hearing impaired children. It was really fun. And the sense of satisfaction that we got by using our technical skills and giving it back to the uh, deaf and the mute community was immeasurable. And it was really cool to see these hearing impaired people use the glove, which really let them speak. Uh, now, uh, we, we received many innovation awards, and we were awarded, uh, we were, uh, we were awarded the Ed Buzzer Award, the National Innovation Award. But then, these are all the awards that they achieved. But the best part came when I received the I3 Young Innovator Award. And as a privilege of winning the award, I was chosen to represent India at the Commonwealth Young Entrepreneurs Summit. I was the face of my country at that event. And that made me realize that this is what I always wanted. Finding your passion is like finding your personal roadmap. Every person needs to come out of their comfort zone and follow your passion. Because once you know what your passion is, you are so motivated, inspired, and so much clearer about what your next step should be. And now I acknowledge that innovation is my passion, and no matter what, I will achieve it. This is exactly when I figured out what I wanted to do with my life. As an Indian student of technology, now my primary focus was to innovate and come up with solutions which are low cost, fitting national mindset, and targeted to serve Indian necessities. And now, every day I wake up in the morning is with a reason and say, yes, today is going to be a fun day. And all this will happen just because of try, experiment, and build. Since then, the passion to innovate and excel has always posted a hunger and foolish soul in me. Uh, here are some other things which I have built. Last year, I came up with a wheelchair specifically for paralyzed and people suffering from motor neuron disease who can just access their willpower by using their brain as well as their eyes. So we designed the wheelchair so that they could roll it in any direction just by using their human brain. That is their thought as well as also by using their eye view. Here we use a headset called NeuroSky MindWave, MindWave to extract the EEG data from the brain. It was really cool. And also then we came up with a complete home automation system where you can control any appliance just by using your brains. Now, in India, the present scenario, two out of five deaths in India are mainly due to heart disease or heart attacks. Hence, there is really a need for continuous monitoring of ECG data as well as pre-diagnosis. So currently, my team and I are working with MIT Media Labs to come up with solutions um, and design mobile cardiovascular diagnostic device. Here, is actually, here you can see our uh, uh, design, our prototype. We, can, we have come up with a belt which can be easily worn. It uses a single lead circuit to extract the e ECG data as well as wirelessly transmits it to a mobile application. So the doctor sitting in any part of the world can monitor the ECG data of any rural person. So now, once the doctor here, once you have the ECG data enabled and you have a live display of this ECG, the, our application automatically generates a report of various parameters what the doctors could be really interested in. And now, this is the diagnosis report and this will enable the doctor to continuously monitor the data. We are working on enhancing this and making it more automated so that any, any heart diagnosis disease can be automatically detected just by the mobile application. So now, I just want to ask you a simple question. How many of you sitting here are really satisfied with your work and what you do with your life? How many of you? As expected, because today, 80% of people worldwide are dissatisfied with their work. And only one out of four, and, and one out of four suffer from mental health problems like stress. And the fact is, having all this, how can we imagine and expect some good work, which is awesome, to come out? 
So, but, every, but the fact is, everything we see around us is created by humans. Therefore, we must increase human potential and bring more innovation. To do this, people need resources, confidence, skills, and knowledge. And childhood is, of course, the best time to optimize it. For example, if you, call it, if, if you convince a child that he's a good leader, he'll carry that with him for the rest of his life. So schools should enable self-directed and collaborative learning rather than dictatorial. They must come up with some uh, kind of place, no matter a library or, or a classroom, where you have all the resources, students come together, share their resources and knowledge, work on projects, build and experiment. And such places will enable kids to play with the power of innovation and knowledge, and this will boost their creativity and confidence. And if we ensure that every child sees themselves as creators rather than just consumers, imagine what kind of impact they'll have in the world. So today I would like to end my talk uh, with, with a small story. It's about uh, my friend Daniel who lives back, who lives in Bangalore and he's a hotel manager in a famous hotel in Bangalore. So I met him a couple of months back and he told me that he's really hating the job, what he's doing and all those buzzing tables. And then he told me that he's waiting for Almighty to tell him what to do with his life. I was surprised listening to that. I told him, I, Daniel, I don't think God works like that. Your purpose in life is never written on the wall or is never revealed to you in full. But what I believe is God joins only when you take the initial risk. It is you who have to just fall into it and give the try and it is when God will join you. So the only way to discover your passion and innovate is to try, experiment and win. Thank you.